Fish can't talk, they can't blog, and they certainly can't protest. But if these fish could, they would declare a state of aquatic emergency. Their plight is happening beneath the surface of our Fanwos rivers, a hidden realm far removed from our day-to-day -day lives. The ancient mountains of the Fanwos region at the southwestern tip of Africa witnessed the genesis of a globally unique group of freshwater fishes a long, long time ago. For millennia, they have swum freely and prospered, but a century ago, all that began to change. We have polluted our rivers, dammed their flows, and taken their water. But most damaging of all has been the introduction of invasive species. Predatory fish like North American black bass were brought here to improve angling, but spread through our fainwall streams like wildfire and have literally eaten their way through our native fish populations, leaving aquatic deserts in their wake. River by river, we are suffocating these watery worlds and destroying in decades what took nature eons to create. Today, our once widespread Fainbos fishes are now confined to short segments of mountain streams, free from human influence and exotic fish. In many cases, populations are now so small and vulnerable that they are unlikely to see the next century unless we take responsibility for our actions and listen to their silent cries for help. These fishes are more than just a list of threatened species. They are characters in crisis, and these are their stories. Our journey begins high up in the Cedarberg Mountains, where the aptly named during fiery red fin minnow clings to survival by a thread. I'm up in the Brekans River Valley, very ancient place, hot, dry and desolate. And uh, down below me in the Brekans River is one of the last remaining populations of the Durang fiery redfin minnow. Um, over the last hundred years or so, American black bass have swum up from the Durang River, invaded the Brekans up to a small waterfall, and it's above that that one of the last pockets of fiery redfin now exists. So I'm going to take a walk down there and hopefully they have they're still holding out strong. So the Durang River Fire Redfin holds on. The question is, for how long? The situation in the Breerkrans River is typical of that in Flanbor streams. Indigenous species have retracted into small isolated pockets above waterfalls that block access to exotic fish. With just a few hundred individuals now left in just a few kilometers of stream, the future of the fiery redfin looks bleak unless we can find a way to give them back some room to survive. We now travel 400 kilometers to the east, to the sleepy town of Barrydale, where another critically threatened redfin minnow faces an equally treacherous situation. Dr. Martine Jordan of Cape Nature has been working on the Barrydale redfin for the past five years. We, uh, we've decided to start working on the Barrydale redfin in terms of annual monitoring and a conservation plan um, because it's sort of a, a model ecosystem for the threats of the fish of the Cape Coristic region. So everything that's threatening these fish on like a, a regional scale, you've got this like, yeah, sort of like a, almost like a microcosm of threats here. It's, um, it's water abstraction, it's poor water quality, urban and agricultural development, alien fish, alien vegetation encroachment. Um, what we've seen in terms of the water abstraction is um, the fish of, um, in summer, they've got a massively high parasite load and the fish are really looking worse for wear, whereas the moment you improve, improve the, the flow and the water quality, as we see sort of in, the, in the wet season, the parasite load drops dramatically. 
So there really is incentive for improving water use efficiency in the catchment. And it's really amazing the, the input from some of the locals in the, the Barrydale community. And yeah, I just take my hat off to them for wanting to do that and the enthusiasm and the involvement that, they, that they've shown. It's, it's really, it makes, it makes our work worthwhile, I guess. So. It could make all the difference to the Barrydale Redfin if we can work with farmers to find a way to feed a little clean water back into the river. The Bilo River, on the edge of the Tankwa Karoo, is one of the last strongholds of a larger but equally threatened Thanbos fish, the Clan William Sandfish. We catch up with Sandfish Guru Dr. Bruce Paxton from the Freshwater Research Centre, who has seen radical changes in sandfish numbers over the years. Nobody is really a sandfish guru. Um, we don't really know much about this fish at all. Um, the numbers are so low um, that any kind of invasive study um, is not really ethically acceptable. The numbers in the catchment must have been very high um, from reports from uh, farmers that we've spoken to in the catchment where entire pools would go black as these fish rose to the surface and turned while they were feeding. The situation today is radically different. Um, the numbers in the main stem have declined drastically. Um, there's no more young fish um, in the main stem. Um, we now know that they're using the tributaries to spawn, um, but the recruitment is very low as a result of predation by uh, bass and bluegill sunfish. I think that um, the most important uh, contribution that, that conservation can make is in reclaiming sandfish habitat and that means eliminating bass and bluegill from sections of river that previously would have um, been important um, habitat for, for sandfish and the upper Bido is one of those rivers that have the most potential. Our last stop on this journey is the Rondegat River Valley, a beacon of hope for our imperiled fanbos fishers. Dr. Dara Woodford has witnessed an ecological transformation in the system, where against all odds, we have found a way to reel our indigenous species back from the edge of extinction. So I've known this river on and off for, what would it be, approximately 12 years? Maybe just under 12 years. I first came here in March of 2003 at the start of my master's project, which I was conducting at the University of Cape Town. Uh, it was a zoology master's to look at the impact of smallmouth bass on the indigenous fishes of the Rondakat River. Now, interestingly enough, that project was co-supervised with Dean Imsen from Cape Nature, who even back then was trying to organize the rote noning project to remove the bass in order to provide a refuge for the native fishes. And so I came back to the Rondakat in 2011 and helped the team do insect and fish surveys on the river. And as I said, it was pretty much the same as that I'd left it in 2005, but this time we were having a much more uh, fundamental uh, look at the system in terms of its insect diversity, in terms of where the fish were and where the fish weren't. Then, uh, in February of 2012, I had the privilege of sitting by the bank, collecting insect drift, as the plume of rote known came down the river, and all of those bass, after so many years of hard work, finally started going belly up before my eyes. And that was quite a cathartic moment, I can tell you. So the operation was a complete success and we've been monitoring the recovery of the insects ever since, as well as the recovery of the fishes. And although there's still ongoing work with the insect diversity, it seems that the river has bounced back completely already. And the fish are slowly but surely reclaiming that lost habitat, four kilometers of river that had not been theirs to call home since the late 1940s for all we know. And now, at last, after much hard work, we're seeing a return to some form of normalcy for the fishes and insects of the Lower Rondakat River. As we have the power to deplete, so too do we have the power to restore. We have the know-how to improve habitat quality and to remove exotic fish, 
and in this way create new sanctuaries for our dwindling Fenbos fish populations, giving them a fighting chance for a future. As custodians of these rivers, the choice is now ours to take action or sit back and watch as species by species our Fenbos fish disappear from planet Earth for good. <laughs>